How are you, Neil? Hey, Matthew, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Well, I'm tired today for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, um, yeah, me too. But it's kind of just a default state. Yeah. <laughs> I know Mondays are kind of like that, huh? Yeah, and we had our new uh, parks manager start today. So lots yeah. of new things. Is, is he going to be joining us tonight or? No, I don't think so. I, I already put him through the ringer all day today. So I figured I'd just take this one and get him all queued <laughs> up for next one. Sure. Okay, that sounds good. I guess Matthew, if you wanted to, you could talk about him a little bit or what 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 you know of him, I guess. Yeah, I figured I'd give a quick blurb. I saw that on the, uh, the schedule there. Yeah. I figure most of the pair of folks probably already know me and heard enough about me, but I can give him a little a little plug. Well, you can re you can reintroduce yourself too, because uh I have a couple new members too. So um you 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 uh feel free to introduce yourself as our city arborist, okay? All right, can do, easy enough. Okay. So I'm just waiting uh, to see, I can't start the meeting until, well, I mean, I always wait till I have a quorum before I call the meeting to order. Yep. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, yeah, I'll just do the initial plug and then I'll just do an update as interim director person yeah for under uh the uh, parts report you mean yeah i saw that john did a little blurb usually about here's what yeah. we're doing and all that so yeah um what i had asked him to do was uh just to attach the the, the park parts report to our packet just to expedite our meeting a little bit more and so um usually i think I know back in the day, the parks report was included as part of the city report, I think. Mm. So, so we just had that included in our packet as well. But I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't know if the city's still doing those city reports or if it's through a different venue now. Uh, I'm not sure. I do remember Alicia saying something about the parks report not being done. Uh huh. Um, so I, I'll just, I'm happy to kind of, I've got some things written down about what we have been doing and what we're planning sure. to do, that's productive. Sure, that sounds good. That sounds good. And to hold down the fort, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's good. We're almost up to full staff and we got some really good folks in, so it's going to be a good season. We just got to get folks all schooled up and get them going then after that we can get to it yeah how many so how many uh how many uh uh park staff people do you have now oh let's see here we got there's you mandy seven, Aaron. Seven or eight full-time people plus two seasonals in the temp really yeah so we're we're hiring four people over uh four weeks so we're we're really getting folks queued up. Wow. <laughs> It'd be nice. So so basically there'll be seven full-time and then two seasonal? I think so. I'll, I'd, I'd have to write down all their names. But yeah, we got six or seven full-timers, including myself. And then, yeah, two seasonals. And we have a one temp person right now. And it sounds like if we run into big projects, we have revenue sources to pull in more temps. Uh, I'm trying to understand all these things. Yeah, we, we got lots of bodies. It's better than just Aaron and I. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah.
Hey, Colin. Hey, Danu. How, How you been? Oh, I'm great. Trying to take some of this meeting outside tonight because it's so nice. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> How about you? How are you? Oh, I'm doing okay. I was uh, just telling Matthew uh, oh. Nelson, our city arborist, that I'm feeling a little tired today. I don't know. Maybe it's just Monday. Maybe so. Yeah. So let's see, there's me and uh, David Crawford and Colin and Tim. So, uh, and Jan, great. Okay, so we have a quorum going. Happy May, everybody. I'll call uh, the pair meeting to order for May 1st. And um, hey, Tim, you with us? Tim Bresnahan on phone? Yeah, hey, Danu. Okay, great. I'm waiting out. I'm waiting out soccer practice, so I'm on. Um, I dialed in. Okay. All right, great. Um, okay, so um, our first item is that we have the resignation of John Stark. And uh, hold on, sorry. Hey, Steve. Hey, Danu. Hey, uh, I got the parent meeting going. We're meeting via Zoom, okay? Uh, yeah, the link you sent me goes to. GoDaddy.com. GoDaddy.com. Oh dear. Yeah. Okay, here. Um, it's Manitou Springs Co. <laughs> is what you said. And it, okay, hold on. You know what? Hey, Steve, let me try to send this to you real quick, okay? Yeah. If you could just send me the direct link, that'd be awesome. Yeah. All right. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, hold on for a minute here. Okay, um, see, where was I? Oh yeah, Dan Stark, he, uh, he, he put in his resignation and, and uh, Friday was his last day. And so we have our, our uh, acting interim park, uh, parks uh, staff, Matthew Nelson. Matthew, you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Matthew, I'm a city arborist and acting Parks and Rec Director. Um, so I'll be holding down the fort until we get somebody else hired into that role. Um, interiming with Megan Weiss, who's our fence coordinator. Um, so I'm gonna try to just maintain uh, course and speed on a lot of the projects we had going. Um, so that's me. Uh, and then I'm supposed to also introduce our, uh, we got a new, a new parks manager today. It was his first day. His name is Brad. Uh, Brad Barr, uh, he comes from a strong background in irrigation and metro districts. Uh, I think he's going to be a huge asset to the team, so we're really glad to have him aboard. Okay, great. Um, item two, approval of agenda. I'd like to amend the agenda to table this is the Beehive discussion. Um, Steve, uh, Shannon Solomon uh, is moving out of town. And so he's going to have somebody else uh, take over the bees in Deer Valley Park. And so that is gonna happen maybe on the agenda in June, maybe. Other than that, um, the agenda is as it's uh, presented. So can we get an approval of the amended agenda? I'll approve, Danu. Okay, thanks, Colin. Can I get a second? I'll, I'll second that, thanks. Okay, thanks, Tim. Okay, uh, is anybody opposed to that? If not, I'm, I'm assuming we all approve the approval of the agenda. How about the approval of minutes from uh, February? No, sorry, March. The regular meeting from March. And then we also have the uh, meeting minutes from April that need to be approved, but let's go ahead and take March 1st. So move, this is Jan. Okay, thanks Jan. I'll second the, the minutes from March. Is all approved? Is anybody opposed? Okay, the, the, the meetings are uh, adopted. Uh, and how about the meeting minutes from April? I 
make a motion to approve as submitted. Okay, I'll second that as well. Is everybody all in favor of approval? Okay, anybody opposed? Okay, then the, the minutes are approved from March and April. Uh, item four, we have uh, Steve Wood for Com Concrete Couch. I just sent him the link to our, our meeting here. And uh, I'm, uh, let's see here. <laughs> Very difficult with these Zoom meetings here and trying to get everybody on board. Uh, let me see here. Well, you know what? Let's uh, let's move on and come back to him. All right, I had the wrong email address for him. Uh, we'll come back to Steve when he comes comes on board. So, uh, reports for Park and Rec Advisory Board. Um, Robin and Mia from Hort Copeland and Mock will be presenting to Council on May 9th. and. Um, we're, we also had our tree planting day on Saturday, and um, a small group of us planted five trees. And then um, Matthew's going to go ahead and, and plant the rest of the, the bigger trees with his tree group. And Council Liaison, Michelle, hi. <laughs> Do you have anything Hello. for us? Happy May. Yes, happy May. No, I have nothing to report. Okay. Then uh, we have the meeting minutes from uh, open space in our packet, quite a few of them. So whenever you have some time, if you guys would just read up on those and see what OSAC is doing. And we'll move on to item seven, the Park and Rec uh, Interim Director's Report. Matthew. Perfect. Thank you. So uh, like I mentioned, we're just going to try to maintain course and speed on the current projects y'all been working on. Um, I, I thank you in advance for your patience as I'm getting up to speed on a lot of things. Uh, we're almost fully staffed at this point. We'll be fully staffed here in about a week, week and a half, which will be really exciting. We'll be training folks up, setting goals, and trying to get on a good trajectory for this season. Uh, we planted five trees for Arbor Day, and we have many, many more trees to come. Um, we're going to plant a lot of trees this spring. Uh, we are uh, clear to drop on the Clean Air Care, uh, which is an OLM compliant uh, lawn care, plant health care provider. So I just met with them today. They're going to be doing some treatments in Memorial Park, Mansions Park, and Fields Park. So that's just waiting on the irrigation to be turned on. And other than that, it's just regular parks maintenance and improvement. Okay, great. Okay, Steve Wood from Country Couch. Hi. <laughs> Hi, sorry about all that. Hey, Steve. Uh, go ahead and uh, um, um, give your presentation from Country Couch, Steve. So uh, Country Couch has done a lot of projects in Manitou, I don't know, maybe 30 with community groups and uh, funded them all kind of creatively. Uh, sometimes some money from the city, but also money and support from lots of different groups and um, a few years ago 2016 2017 i'm forgetting now we got to uh, work with the city and community groups and manitou middle school to do the soda springs park uh, fence and gates project which has been really really successful as far as the goals of many of the community um, and one of the things that was really neat about that project is we managed to do two or three other things at the park with the, the money from uh, that project. And one of them was to uh, create the rain garden that is on the southwest corner of the pavilion. And that's kind of one of those neat projects where it actually solves the problem uh, in that um, 
where the water would run after every rain, it would erode the gravel pathway to the west. So just one more job that Public Works had to come and fill this little gully that was clearly a, a hazard. Um, so we suggested that they move the gutter around the corner and that we would build and maintain uh, until it was established a rain garden. And they did, and the rain gardens worked awesome. Um, and then more recently, Mary Ellen Montgomery talked to me about uh, this work happening in Soda Springs Park, and it would be really uh, great to expand the rain garden, which is also a pollinator. Um, and she encouraged Concrete Couch to apply for a mini grant. So we did. Um, and obviously, if we get the money and we work on the rain garden, we want you guys to be involved and make sure we're adding it in the right configuration. Um, and there's a lot of flexibility as far as expanding the rain garden. We could do it on a separate gutter. We could expand that existing gutter. Um, and whatever we do, we'll work with uh, public works staff. And I think a lot of the little things that we were able to do around there, we poured a little concrete to uh, make it so that this going up to the stairs was stabilized and also parking on the east side. We poured a little concrete there. And um, so we were able to do a lot of little other stuff that actually did work, made it kind of value added for public, public works. So at this point, I think we're just conceptually asking for support from you guys like, oh yeah, we'd love to support an expansion of the Grain Garden as a community project. And um, clearly it's done great. And that has involved some maintenance by Concrete Couch that we just do as part of, um, well, frankly, as part of me being a resident there. So when, it, when it's dry, and obviously sometimes it's dry, I'll go and get some buckets from the creek and, and hand water it. But it is quite established. Um, so expanding it sounds exciting. And that's kind of what I'm, that's what I'm here talking about. Anybody have questions for Steve? Like, do you know where he's talking about the area that he's talking about? Carol? I just want to say thanks to Steve for all he does for Manitou and the whole area and, and really the community, community in the Pikes Peak region. So thanks, Steve. Thanks. Yeah, I'll second that. Thanks, Steve. Danu, yeah, can you or Steve just remind me where this area exactly is? We're talking about. Um, so yeah. it's, it's around the Soda Springs Park uh, Pavilion, and the rain garden that we built is now on the. It's on the south side, kind of facing the bathrooms, um, and it's on the west side, closest to the Mate Factor. And if you go look at it next time you're there, you might not have even seen it, but it's just a little bed, maybe two feet by ten feet, and it's got some flowering shrubs and it it is a little trick to make a rain garden that works like you don't want two small things like flowers and so like shrubs and trees work best and in that site trees wouldn't have worked so we have shrubs that can be you know pruned and kept from getting too big so but exactly where this expansion will be I think is something that needs to happen on the ground uh, with public works and hopefully somebody from the parks board just to make sure it fits in with the master plan. So uh, just just to, to help clarify that, Colin, you know, you're coming over the bridge by the Mate and, and you're heading right for the pavilion. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the area that's right um, <clears throat> to the right of the, the railing that goes around the, the pavilion. Mm -hmm. and. And it's right where the downspout of the gutter empties into. And, okay. and it's, a, it's a small area that's got, I think you've got rocks going around it to define the border. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, it's, it's right, that, right there in that little area. So. Thanks. I'll, I'll take a look at it again next time I'm over there just to clarify my. Yeah. Perception. Anybody else for Steve? So. Uh, I just wanted to add in there that, you know, we're doing a big master plan for Soda Springs Park and the landscape architects have been, you know, um, drawing in certain uh, garden areas 
for the master plan. So it would probably be good to maybe work with them and see where where your uh, your expansion of your rain garden might work. You know, perhaps on the uh, on the other side of the pavilion, maybe or I don't know. I that other side gets used quite a bit where the other uh, rain rain spout comes down, but. Yeah, if you wanted to connect me, Danu, I think that would be fun. Um, a lot of landscape architects haven't done rain gardens, and but I found they're usually pretty interested in them, especially. And we have a few other ones um, around town that have, that are working really great. In fact, the big thing with our rain gardens is we've got to spend extra time pruning the shrubs because they grow so they're they're so health, half, happy where right. they are. So I'd be happy to meet with them and see if our plan can fit with their plan. Um, I think Mary Allen was thinking, oh, hey, we got some grants coming up quick. You could put something in this spring, but we don't have to do that. We could we could do it at a later schedule. Um, we could work in the fall. We could work the following spring. Yeah. Um, if, if they're really available right away, we could still do it this spring. So we're flexible. Well, um the uh, landscape architects are going to be presenting the master plan, the updated master plan, May 9th to council. So, uh, are they I local? Guess, no, they're out. They're out of Denver. Okay. Yeah. So, I guess. I guess. Does anybody else want to weigh in on this? Well, we've worked with these landscape architects before, so it's not like they're new. And they're really, Steve, I think you'd be fine working with them. And mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, next Tuesday, a week from Tuesday would be a good time for you to just kind of peek in during a Zoom council meeting and just get an idea. Um, that I don't, I don't think it's a big deal. And again, Donnie, if you connected us and, and asked them just to share their plan, their draft plan, they might do that. And then I could kind of do a little sketch and show what I'm proposing and see if they want to incorporate it. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Yay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Steve. And thanks everybody for Parks. You guys are amazing. And I know, Danu, you are extra special amazing because you've been doing it for about as long as I can remember. So thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, Steve. Right. Thanks, Steve. Keep up the great Bye. work. Thanks. Okay, moving on to item eight, new business. Um, we had somebody apply for one of our mini grants. Um, let me give you a little background on our mini grants. The monies that we have in this uh, particular fund is from fees in lieu of land. And so it's, it's a limited uh, income revenue that we get. Um, so once that money's gone, it's gone unless um, unless there are more subdivisions to develop or major major uh, um, development plans to come through planning. And if if these plans don't have any land for parks, we we, we take fees and move of the land. So. Um, I had um, Alicia attach the criteria for these mini grants to the packet. Did you guys, were you guys able to uh, review any of that? Grant guidelines? I did Danu and, and really with Apadana, I think it fits except for the location with uh, Buffalo Lodge, but with activities being in in Manitou, maybe we could squeak it in. I don't know. So, yeah, thanks, Jan. Did you, did you, you know, the way the grant information is set up, the grant guidelines weren't easily accessible. So, if you guys all, you know, scrub, scroll down to uh, the grant guidelines, it talks about the eligibil eligibility. It says, uh, to the eligible applicants, please note mini grants will not cover third party compensations 
or salaries. And what I did was I, I sent an email to the applicant asking if the grant request was to be used to pay the musicians at this event, to which she said yes. So, Tara, would you consider that a, a third party compensation then? Oh, I feel like we're splitting hairs. I, first of all, I agree with Jan. I think that it's uh, it's right up to where we want the, these things to be, but the location is slightly problematic. I, I think from a third party standpoint, um, the payment, considering that this is a fundraising event and that the music is a key part of that, I'm not sure that it would be, that that necessarily would exclude it. But um, uh, because without the music, there isn't a fundraiser. And it's not like they are using this to pay, um, you know, labor to set things up or uh, like a catering fee for their staff. I think it's, I mean, I, I feel like it's more prohibitive for those types of payments. Well, actually, um, actually, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the next little uh, headline, it says, the community grants opportunity is meant to cover project costs and is not meant to be a money-making opportunity for the applicants. So again, it's a, I fun, think we, it's a fundraiser, but right. But we have to be careful because we're setting the, precedent, Tim, you know? Well, I, I don't know. I, I see a difference between a fundraiser and uh, something that is specifically for an individual's profit. I mean, this is a, uh, a community nonprofit organization with a mission that is in line with our values. I'm with I'm with Tim. So again, on for that. me, the only the, again the only thing for me that I think is is questionable as far as how we use our mini grants is the location because it's not actually happening in Manitou, nor is this an organization that is based in Manitou. Now, well, actually, actually, their offices are located in Manitou. Oh, they are? Oh, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. there we go. They're in Manitou. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I guess I don't have a problem. From that standpoint, I don't have a problem with it. I didn't realize that they were located in Manitou. And, and yeah. I'm with Tim on that in that it's a fundraiser for activities within our parks and getting kids on bikes and just actually getting people outside. So it is, as Tim said, splitting hairs. Yeah. But I think we can rationalize the fact that this is something that benefits the kids in the community um, and spills over into Colorado Springs, which is, you know, what is it, one tenth of a mile where Buffalo Lodge is? So I don't know. Yeah, I Up and Down is a fantastic nonprofit organization that moves to increase diversity and access for all individuals. And I think it's so fantastic. And I think we need to support these types of things because it's not, we've, we've given money to flying pig farm, you know, and mm -hmm. like that was our, one of our last ones. And I think it's just, I don't know, you can split hairs or support the groups that are doing really fantastic work that aligns with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely support them. Well, how about, you know, because they included their budget sheet here also. I mean, I guess for me, I could I could go back to them and ask them to um, tweak their 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 mini grant request to reflect us, you know, supporting the actual uh, costs of the uh, of putting this whole project on, so that it's not geared to paying the musicians. So well, Danu, to Danu, help Danu, I think I, I think you can sleep comfortably knowing that we'd, we'd be we'd, we'd be helping them out and doing the right thing. And I don't think we can necessarily I mean, does it really make a difference if we tell them what dollar can be spent on what? Well, I, I guess I'm just trying to establish some kind of consistency, that's all with our, you know, grant funding. But, you know, I. You know, I, 
Does anybody else have any feelings about this? Well, okay. William. Do you want does somebody does somebody want to go ahead and make a motion then? Or or do you want to have further discussion? Or do you guys want to think about it? I move to support this mini grant application. Okay. For the full one thousand dollars, Rebecca? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'll second that or third or whatever we need. Yeah, second is good. Okay, uh, does anybody want to have any more discussion about this? Okay, if not, uh, how many people approve then? Okay, Colin? Candace? Uh, I approve. Okay, um, I know Jan, Tim, you guys approve, Rebecca? And then B. Um, you know what? I'm gonna approve. I'm gonna approve the thousand dollars. But when I respond back to her, is it all right? I'm gonna tell them that we technically don't support uh, paying wages of of third party compensations, but that it's a worthy uh, cost, and this this money can go toward other operating expenses that they might have. Is that a fair enough compromise? Yeah, and you could, I mean, if you look okay. at their expenses, you can just ask them to do, if you want them to read like, you know, between materials and equipment, like. Right, right. You, like, that's like, fine. For, and I'm for, sure they're happy to do that. It's just. Yeah, yeah. Because for, for supplies, it's $500 right there. Equipment rental, you know, that's $200. Advertising, it's 300. So that's a thousand bucks right there, so. Okay, is that is that a fair enough compromise, you guys? Sounds good. Good. Yeah, to sounds that. sounds good to me too. Thanks, Danu. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. Okay. Now I gotta get back to my agenda here. Um. So, uh, old business, clean air, lawn care. At our last meeting, you guys all approved ten thousand dollars to uh, care for our lawns organically. And Chris and I got together and went over all of these estimates that we got and tried to like make the best decisions to spend our ten thousand dollars wisely. So we chose Memorial Park and and uh, decided to have Steve Mull and Clean Air Lawn do the whole nine yards of of turf care which is applying all of the organic product, doing the compost top dressing and overseeding for $6,960. And then we took the next largest area, uh, which is Fields Park, and decided to just do, have them do just the organic treatment, which amounted to $2,440. And then we, with the remainder of the 10,000, we chose Mansions Park just to do the organic treatment, which was $705. So it all added up to $10,105. So I just wanted to ask Parab to please approve the extra $105 because it did go over $10,000. So Danu, does that have to go out to bid? It already did. It already went out to bid and uh, uh, the other companies either didn't respond back or or they, well, basically none of them responded back. So um, the contract has already been drawn up and, uh, um, and uh, Matthew met with them today. So they're, they're good to go. So I just, you know, I just wanna just dot all my I's and cross all my T's just to get extra approval of the $105 from Harold. I so move that the under extra $105 be given to Steve Moll for this project. Okay, I'll great. I'll second that. Okay, great. Thanks, Colin. Uh, everybody approve of that? Aye. 
I, I, is anybody opposed? Okay, great. Thank you guys. That motion passes. Um, item 10, other business. We don't have any. Item 11, if we don't have any more things to discuss, I'll adjourn this meeting. Danu, I just had a couple quick questions. So uh, I reading the minutes from the last meeting, and thank you since I couldn't be there about putting that part in about making sure that the tennis players do have priority on that extra stripe court. Tim made a suggestion about looking for another space. Has anything been done about that? Or was that just a suggestion to say we should think about looking for more space for pickleball courts? Probably, probably a suggestion that we could keep our eye open for another possible location. Isn't that right, Tim? That sounds about right. I don't think yeah. we did anything substantive other than other than say, hey, everybody do a slow brainstorm. Yeah, um, but that's that's another uh, task that we're gonna have to follow up on with our new park and rec director. Uh, or I'm not sure, Matthew, you wanna hop, hop back on the meeting real quick here? Hello. So, so at our last meeting, we decided to try to uh, expand the pickleball court access by adding pickleball boundary lines on the tennis courts. Okay. And and John was going to look into that, and I was just wondering if that would be something that you could follow up on, or if we should just wait and, and have the park manager Brad look into that. Yeah, I can work with Brad on that. I talked to him about it today. Okay. Because um, uh, I think they completely redid the tennis court and pickleball courts last year. Um, I don't know the additional cost, uh, so I'd have to try to figure out who did the last striping um, and figure out what it's going to cost and where all the money would come from and all that. So I can work with Brad on that in the next couple of weeks as I bury him with all the things that we're doing right now. So, you know... Um... A while back, we when we did it before, because we put pickleball lines on the tennis courts, uh, Public Works was able to do that in house. Okay, that was I was not involved in that process, but I can poke around see if we have folks that have that experience. Some of our streets folks, they they know how to paint those sort of lines. Right, um, right. I wouldn't feel comfortable because it wouldn't be a straight line. It'd be a little squiggly. Um, that wouldn't be good. Yeah. Well, yeah, just maybe ask ask if they would be able to do that okay. or if they'd be willing to do that. Okay. And then and then you'd have to check on the, the correct size and dimensions of 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 the uh, pickleball court. Okay, so the, the goal is to overlay the tennis court with pickleball lines on both sides. Right. Okay. In in a different color. Okay. Paint, yeah. But also also to have some kind of a signage. That would that would say that the tennis tennis players have what uh, uh, first dibs precedent over pickleball players. Okay. Yeah, I think something that to the effect and and Jan, you can rest assured that I'm advocating now both on the side of the pickleballers and the tennis players because I've been playing a ton of pickleball lately. Um, but yeah, Whoa! I think. <laughs> I think we should have something that says, yeah, something like if if tennis players wish are, are waiting to get on the court, they should be given priority regardless, um, just because we do have the two dedicated pickle cords. OK, and I guess we could work on some specific wording uh, with you, Matthew. OK, I'll talk to Brad about that. Uh, I just kind of. I, I told him a lot of things today, but I'll put that on top of his radar to see what we can do to overlay that or explore that process. Right. Thank and you. then and then I, I guess Matthew is is Brad gonna just uh pick up on some of this the projects that uh uh John had started, like the ADA um restrooms at, at fields, you having the remodel done with that, or, or should we just wait until a bonafide director comes on board to do all that? Yeah, some of it, uh, it's probably better to wait for the, the next director to come on. I'm gonna maintain trajectory and things I can. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I can't do two jobs all the time. Right, 
Right. Um, Understood. So some of the stuff I could definitely keep up on. Um, but yeah, some of those bigger projects uh, they require a lot of time and dedication and consistent pressure. It's probably best to have a devoted person to do that. Right. Okay. Sounds good. So Matthew, Jan has a question about trees. It seems like some are dead, but I am not an arborist. So I'm wondering what the schedule is for checking out our many kind of stressed trees. Oh, in the parks throughout the city or both? Uh, I'm thinking only the parks. Yeah, we, we had some mortality over the course of the winter. Um, there's one big one in Shriver, the beaver, like, they killed it. And it finally let go on us, the big Douglas fir up against the road. So as we start to get more staff in and I have the ability to start addressing those trees, it should be done the next couple of weeks um, within the existing workload of planting trees while it's still not too hot out and all that. So all the high hazard trees will come out as soon as possible. And all the ones that aren't an imminent threat to life property will be triaged through the, uh, the next month or two. Okay, thanks. Thanks for no stepping worries. up. Appreciate it. Happy to, I just work here. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Questions, discussions? Mary Ellen, I'm circling back to you, Mary Ellen. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm, hi. Hi, I'm sorry about all the confusion with the <laughs> Zoom link and everything. I went, I, went to, I went to City Hall and saw the women's club down there, so. <laughs> <laughs> Arab is not here. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Did you? Anyway, I missed Steve's, uh, Steve Wood's uh, presentation, but I just wanted to add that, it, you know, the Garden Club had um, contributed to that and we support it. And it, to me, it's a legacy project, you know, and uh, it's got some real relevance in this time with water shortages and the drought and everything, how we could be showing people how they could be producing rain gardens in their own yard. So if we, if you guys did approve it, we could get a sign, you know, an upgraded sign. There's kind of a little cheesy sign there and, uh, and showing that this is a rain garden and maybe give a link on the sign to where people could look more about rain gardens and how to do it in their own yard. And I just brought it up now because I know y'all are in the process of uh, designing the West End and it's, just didn't want you to paint yourself into a corner and you know have to address it later with heavy equipment and stuff you know because it's over there by the bridge so it would have to be kind of done before other other big major changes are made so that's all uh, garden club's been around for 30 years we had our anniversary last year 30 year anniversary i've been a member for 15 years and uh we'll be happy to fund part of this um if you guys approve it so that's all i uh, attended this meeting for really and, right. uh, yeah. And, and then, and Mary Ellen, what I basically told Steve was it would probably be good to have him uh, work with our landscape architects. And because uh, they're, they're going to be presenting the master plan to city council on May 9th. Cool. I, I know it's real um, seductive to get the big consultants in and the big projects and spend all that big money. I just wanted to put in the plug for, you know, little legacy. Uh, projects that could be um, retained and expanded on and Steve Wood is a huge contributor to the town with his with his art and his uh, legacy projects so okay that's great it. yeah thanks thank, Mary you. thanks thank you okay I'm gonna take off thanks guys okay thank you thanks Mary Ellen bye all right anybody else have anything to toss out there on the table no, if not, I'm going to really adjourn the meeting now then, okay? All right, sounds good. Thanks. Okay, thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Good, good to see you all. Thank you, Matthew. Pleasure. Y'all take it easy. Okay. Take care.